Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming. Welcome to the last, actually, of this festival's Q&As uh, with Puppeteers. My name's Matt, I'm one of the festival team here and delighted to welcome Zanny Fraser. Join me in welcoming her. Yay. Hi. So Zanny, we're honoured to have you as a workshop facilitator this time. Actually, I think last time you brought a show for us. I so my cranky. Oh, yes. So you brought your cranky show last time and this time you're teaching cranky, which we'd love to touch on a little bit, that modality and, and how you've been working with that uh, and shadow. But I guess let's start at the beginning. <laughs> Everybody's always interested in that origin story, you know, how you got started yeah. and how that came about. But I'd really like to get a sense of that journey as well, yeah. how it might have evolved where you started and where you are now. Well, apart from painting the large cardboard box that my parents' fridge freezer came in <laughs> and jumping in and doing a glove puppet show for my sister, uh -huh. I didn't really do much um, as, as a child. I didn't think about, uh, I liked the idea of being an actor, but it doesn't, yeah. wasn't a realistic, uh -huh. you know, it felt a bit, you know, it's a dream. Um, so I went off to university and did something completely different. <laughs> and um, after that, I wasn't sure what to do, but I um, did a summer course and met some people who'd come back from Paris and studied with Philippe Gaulier and Lecoq and I thought ooh um, so I went back home and, and worked for a year and saved up and headed off to Paris uh -huh. and that was just very performancey very visual gestural theatre mm. and um, so visual theatre vi gestural theatre okay. yes I think yeah. obviously it wasn't so language based yeah. a lot of clown he's uh -huh. very clown influenced uh -huh. he's a clown teacher yeah. I'm just thinking that kind of that um, as a being a performer and a, 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 a movement is 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 what in, sort of inspires me. And I remember hearing about and you, all sorts of people came and went through that year and um, we did a bit of mask. And I remember someone describing this show that they made out of a coat with pockets. And I just thought, oh, I love I think I love the idea of that doing everything. I've always been a maker, uh -huh. you know, sort of. So, um, yeah, so. I came back and, um, yeah, I don't, I, yes, I just sort of, I didn't know. I think I made a terrible puppet show out of a clothes horse <laughs> that I did at kids' parties that was described as, um, yeah, as you know, windscreen wiper puppetry. Okay. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. just, I just did it. Uh -huh. But I then found myself in, um, yeah, there was puppetry starting. There weren't any courses to do. It was yeah. before the central course started. But I yeah. did hear yeah. of um, Louis Boy was uh, was running an evening class in London, but he'd, he'd gone up to Norwich, and a lot of people had gone with him. So there was, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know, I sort of picked up that there was activity. Mm. Um, and I found myself in Norwich with my mum on holiday. <laughs> And she was like, oh, should we go around the cathedral? I went, you go around the cathedral. I'll meet you in half an hour. Yeah. And I went and knocked on the door. And the woman went, sorry, they're all out. And so I was like, can I come in? <laughs> no, 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 they're not here. And I was like, I'm not taking no for an answer. So I kept knocking. And she let me in. And I said, I'd like to speak to... <laughs> Never been so bold. Oh, no, they've gone out for lunch. So I went, where have they gone? Because <laughs> they only had half an hour. But they've gone to the pub. Which pub? <laughs> so I, I marched into this pub yeah. and walked up to them and said, hi, I'm here. Uh, can I have an audition? And he went, OK. So he went back. To <laughs> Here's some puppets. And I just went, Wah! and he was, as usual, very dismissive um, okay. as his, was his mm. way. Mm -hmm. But he said, maybe we can meet in London. Um, so I, met, I took all my, my windscreen my puppets that I'd made for sort of children's mm. parties to him. And he was very kind of, he was begrudging with his praise, but he said, if you come to Norwich and hang out, you know, in those days it was a bit easier. You could sort of sign on and get mm. housing benefits. So I just mm. sort of went and crashed on people's floors for about a month. Mm. And Reedy Baker was there, Mark Pittman, Joy Haynes. They were all working and going out doing, there was so much shows. You could go out and do um, 10 shows a week, 10 different schools a week. So there was a lot of work. Mm. So I spent a month literally watching, turning up every morning, doing warm-ups, vocal warm-ups, watching, learning. So I spent a good sort of month there. And then uh, one of Ray De Silva's old shows, which in a rather old-fashioned way were all recorded. It was sort of Paper mm, Tiger. Mm, mm. So with this old track that you know, had lots of voices that seemed they came out of the 1950s. But, 
<laughs> but what was lovely about that is that you just learnt the movement. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, myself and Mark Manda went off in a van and did ten shows a day, mm. a week. <laughs> ten shows a, a day, is, yeah. Touring all round. And that, again, just being able to focus on the movement, uh, yeah, so I kind of yeah. I learnt a lot yes. in that year. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you I became a puppeteer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You felt like you really sort of cut your teeth, like mm. did you did your time? Yes. In those years in Norwich. Yep, and, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, yes, but then went and got a job with um. I forgot the timeline. I was trestle, so uh, uh -huh. working with masks. But again, yeah, it's yeah. very sort of physical, and again, not using. Your voice very often, mm -hmm. often. Um, and you had some time at the Little Angel I, off the back of that? Yeah, it? Actually, it was maybe, yes, because yeah. Mark Manda followed me down. <laughs> 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 and um, again, we toured, um, yeah, mm. again, quite extent extensively. But it was taking on those old shows like Cinder Mouse that were sort of tried and tested. Yes, yeah. It's a, it was a good way to learn. And very much as a jobbing puppeteer, as in, yeah. you know... Yeah, Bunraku, tabletop, yeah. glove. Yeah. I didn't have any sort of particular mm. preference. Marionette? A little bit nervous of strings. I never touched the strings okay. until later on. Yeah. I found myself in a show at the Lyric, uh, a Christmas show, uh, and they gave me a string puppet, and I was like, oop. <laughs> so I kind of learnt on the job, but I mm -hmm. haven't really, not a, I'm a bit nervous of strings. Mm. I think it's the distance. I like to be able to push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I like to have a bit of control. Mm. Uh, mm. That's yes. So how about the relationship with with that working for other companies and then when did you start working on your own mm. work where did mm. that kind of practice um, come about well i um where was i i can't remember the timeline you know it all kind of blurs but um there was a shadow puppeteer called madame suhami oh, yeah, who made jessica suhami she's called madame that was her company beautiful very illustrative in fact she went and became full-time illustrator after that but very colorful um, shadow puppets and people I know work, were working with her at the time uh, so I was aware of her shadow puppetry work. Um, she got some funding to have um, an internship for three shadow puppeteers and I'm like that's it. <laughs> yeah. I write yeah. an application and I sent it off and I was in France at the time I was ringing up have I got it have I got it I didn't get it like, <laughs> oh. but I think the not getting it yeah. made me go right <laughs> yeah. and I the three people who were doing it I kind of shadowed them, became friends, and <laughs> and I got in, and I, and I kind of, some of them snuck me into some of the little talks, and I worked on their show, and I ended up driving them all around as they're doing their <laughs> final show at Jacksonson. I just didn't get to go to the fancy international puppet festivals. Uh -huh. And if, well, one of them went off, uh, ran away with a shadow puppeteer, and <laughs> she still worked in Italy. Um, the other, one is another good friend, and the third I don't know, but I'm also, I feel like I've kind of carried, I learned a lot. Mm. <laughs> away. Um, and then I was working with theatre rights, which again was just as a jobbing actor, but was, was marvellous because it was a very, it was a silent show, largely apart from the old seagull squawk. Mm. <laughs> with um, Alison, we travelled to Japan and Norway and it was a beautiful show. Yeah. Um, and it just had that lovely kind of movement that mm -hmm. I just really enjoy. I think I, I need that kind of physical movement. But while we were on tour, mm. everywhere I went, I'd managed to get some Arts Council funding for a show. I sort of was picking up gigs and chatting to people. Mm -hmm. So off the back of that, I just made a show and launched myself out there making my own stuff. Mm. So I sort of a bit, you know, yeah. Yeah, a lesson in tenacity, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm part terrier. Yeah. <laughs> just going for it. So, yeah, where did the uh, uh, draw to shadow come? Because shadow yes. is really quite central to mm. a lot of your work. It is. I don't know whether it was just sort of seeing all the stuff that they were learning on this kind of internship that I didn't do. <laughs> um, I remember having a conversation with them um, and finding out about companies. They, they went off to see Giacovita, which again, I couldn't go. I don't know. I remember thinking, I just sort of intrigued by it, but I remember having a conversation with Penny Banan, sadly, who, um, who started Theatre Rights but did pass away. Um, well, after we'd worked with her, and, uh, and she was like, so you're going to be the Giacovita of, of the UK, are you, Dania? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I think I just decided. I decided very consciously to kind of narrow myself down because I thought I'll just find my niche because uh -huh. I'd done all sorts. Uh, and what I love about, um, I think I'm not a, I've done all these kind of 
with carving courses and <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really a, a, a you know a, a joints and mechanisms mm. 3D person what I love I called my company originally Ripstop I dropped it because it's a brand name mm. but it's like you get a bit of cardboard whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. oh it looks like a cow brilliant mm. <laughs> and I made a cow in the first show that I did because it was a Jack and the Beanstalk story mm -hmm. and I put this cardboard drawing and, and it was the right mess of lines and everything and uh, ah, and it, it worked well it looked like a cow mm. and then at the end um, it's like the people say can we see the puppets and I was like yes and I'd whip out this bit of cardboard with all my crappy drawing on the back and um, and I, th I thought, isn't that magical? And my friend, who was the musician, she said, the, I think you need to make a proper one. The look of disappointment. I <laughs> <laughs> so I think it, in terms of, I realised that there's that sense of like, wanting to make yourself look um, good. But that's what I love about it, the sort of spontaneity, yeah. um, things coming out of, mm, out mm, of nothing, mm. seemingly. Yeah, it's like the pop-up book that you, you in lockdown, yes. right? The, uh, I made a pop-up book. That, yes, well, that's also like beautifully flat. I think I, I mm. can't think more than two mm. dimensions. But that also is to your benefit when you arrive at the festival and you're like, oh, here's my stuff. It's <laughs> on the train. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the idea. I Yes. Yes. Even for the workshop where you're like, right, it's all... Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, all yeah I did come in the train, yeah. Um, yeah, so well, that's just, I've done a lot of lugging, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of loading and unloading and after it. Mm. But predominantly 2D, is that, do you feel that? I think I like, I just think I like that. Mm. Um, quite, I've been quite recently quite in, influenced by a lot of illustrators and I love children's books. Mm. And I think I'm always working out how the children book, I know it's a big thing in, in theatre now, take a, you know, Gruffalo, turn it into a show, it's a hit, and that sort of annoys me. But I think I'm interested in the, in the sort of arc of a children's story, mm. you know, and how, yeah, I think they don't exactly translate, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. so I have been thinking about illustration and, yes. yeah. yeah. But the thing about, uh, you mentioned I'm doing the Cranky uh, yes. workshop. Yes. Is that the thing about being a, and I've always performed solo, since I decided to do it, I. I like that, um, I just, I'm <laughs> not very good. I've worked in theatre companies, <laughs> well, yeah, in, yeah, you, in team, you, in casts. You, as you mentioned, For yeah, the puppet yeah, theatre yeah. and theatre rights, and I'm, I, that's good. But when I suppose it's when I'm my own stuff, I just like the, mm. I mean, there's an economic benefit to that. And, and I mm -hmm. obviously have a team of directors and musicians and uh -huh, people uh -huh. I work with, but I kind of like heading off with my mm. bag. But um, uh, with shadow puppetry, you can have all the shadows, it's the, um, it's the scenery. <laughs> and I've done shows where I've had like a forest of tripods, you know, to create that scenery and moved yeah, around. And, yeah. and it was sort of doing my head in because I just thought one sneeze and they're all going to go over. And uh -huh. I, it's always that. And that's how I love the pop up yeah. book does that beautifully. It just creates uh, a standing scenery. And the cranky, when I saw that, it's like, ah, oh, and you can change the scenery mm, and mm. it's sort of beautifully contained. So then you're free to play. Because the scenery is doing its thing without you having to mm, mm. hold it up. No, that is interesting. Yeah, because the cranky, yeah, it's it's in a box, right? Yeah. Whereas, like you say, I think shadow theatre can often be <laughs> this kind of array of kind of torches and things on sticks and, and a lot it's of yes, chaos. <laughs> it's lovely on that big scale. Yeah. And I mean, I, the cranky. I mean, that's yeah. I like I like the big scale because that's mm. exactly what shadows can do. You can mm. fill a space. Mm. There's a, mm. a phrase that magicians use, pack small, play big, and it's right. just brilliant. It's like that mm. you can, with a little bit of cardboard, you can create a giant. So that's I think it rings true to puppeteering as well. I think for so. sure. For but the sure. puppet shows can get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to open the floor to questions okay. in a minute. Uh, so be thinking of a question, because uh, I'd love to uh, <laughs> love to open the floor in just a second. But before I do that, uh, um, something we were talking about that I think is really interesting is the relationship of you as a performer, and you're saying you've got a, this performance background, but you are a performer in the puppet show, so you're not necessarily the invisible puppeteer that sometimes... Is it so I wonder if you speak a bit to that and kind of this notion of like who is the puppeteer in mm, a show? Mm. Well, it's always my question sometimes, and I and when I've been sort of um, observing shows or 
I've done a sort of dipping my toe in the water with directing other people's shows. Uh, we're busy focusing on the puppets, and then I go, well, who are you? There's three adults in the room. Mm. And if you look at it as a picture, who are they? You either, and puppeteers used to be hidden, and that's, mm. there's something magical about that, and I'm, I'm hoping things kind of go back to that in a way, because mm. there's something magical about puppets appearing, mm. like they do in a booth. Mm. Uh, but it's, it's true, you see the puppeteer, but you focus on the puppet. But sometimes it's like, well, that's interesting. You know, you can be a person, you can interact with the puppet. Um, but also, like I was saying, Shadow, the, the Cranky, it's limited by the scroll. It's only about half an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to make a show that's 50 minutes, uh, you need more of a story. And I think, I think it's quite hard for a children's audience. And I make primarily, I make family children's theatre to sit and look at a screen particularly nowadays, they're so used to screen doing everything. So just looking at a very simple screen, it's quite demanding of an audience. Mm. So I think I always feel that there's a, you need to kind of immediate the shadows. And it works if you've got a uh, musician. Yeah. The Magic Lantern do it brilliantly. They've got a musician. That, and I've worked with a musician, sort of singer sometimes. Yeah. That, yeah. And then you can be kind of, there's, a, there's just a kind of connection to, with the audience. They can see a pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have seen, pup there are people who do shadow puppet shows big uh anyway for me i quite like i like being there and like seeing the audience and saying hi so i um the first of this sort of trilogy was the real fairy story it was about finding real looking for real fairies so i was this kind of edwardian adventurer um who was convinced that there were fairies and um things that had happened so i um my um partner's a magician so we always have like things popping in really? little magic tricks and things on strings, it was like, as if a bit like a kind of a giant flea circle, circus, but it, that entail, and then my cat disappears, so it's gone into fairy land. So there was sort of, there's a reason to sort of go, yeah. <laughs> and then have a whole sequence, and there I pop up in shadow. Yeah. <laughs> and I sort of kept that as a theme, and then she, Amelia Buttersnap, then went in search of mermaids in the next show, and then she went in search of aliens in the mm. third. I thought mm. I kind of had to make mm. three. So this trilogy, was this the show you took to Edinburgh? Uh, no, it sort of came after that, where I felt okay. like I went to Edinburgh and, and it was a bit of a hotchpot show. Quite a baptism by far. <laughs> I was very lucky to get funding from East to Edinburgh. It was a fund at the time yeah, yeah, to support yeah. people from the Eastern region to go to Edinburgh, which was really nice. Uh -huh. um, so it was all, I didn't lose any money, which, right. but it was a great experience. Yeah, and I came back yeah, thinking, yeah. I want to make really good shows that will hold a family audience yeah, of 150 yeah. Yeah. in a small scale venue. So I think that's yes. where those came from. So like the full, you doing the full month of a Edinburgh show? Pretty much, I think about yeah. three weeks. Yeah, and I had two yeah. small children as well, so oh, all a bit. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. No, that is, that is a slog. <laughs> yeah, but like you say, it is, you do, it, it's ruthless and it does kind of get you knock you into shape a bit. You think, ah, you know what, yeah, ah, it's, uh, yeah, you know what to do then, mm. once you've done it once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Questions, please, for, uh, for Sammy. What uh, venue were you at at Edinburgh? I was in the Pleasance. Oh, yeah. But I was kind of at the courtyard and round the side, so it wasn't oh, the right. sort of, and the snail in the whale was in the courtyard, so I, I was, you know, I was fighting a battle against the, Hence my, I'm not against, I love Julie Donaldson's books, but <laughs> when you're, you're doing, inventing your own stories. Mm. And so called for Edinburgh? Well, ironically, not ironically, I was called, I called myself Ripstop Theatre, I changed my name. Um, I dropped that after a while and just used my own name. Yeah. And then I just thought, I like, I called the show Luminous Tales and I just thought, I like that. So I'm now using that as my, because it mm. feels sort of describes what I do. Yeah. So it was a sort of, it wasn't a full, it was three short stories and I think again that didn't work. I think I realised you needed a, a full story that people could follow from beginning to end. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the competition in Edinburgh, was that a kind of tricky thing? Because it's just so overwhelming, like all of this mm. and actually being part of that. Come to my show. Doing the flyering and then yeah. eventually I gave up because there's a kid so didn't, you know, and, and um, yes. I had um, a terrible review on the first day. Crushing, right? So uh, <laughs> yes, to the point, and so I think that was. So I think a lot of people pick up on that, and all the other reviews tend to kind of follow, sort of follow suit. Mm. She just didn't like it. 
to no. the point she didn't even like my shoes. She had the, it was quite. She went into a lot of detail, oh. and I don't understand her shoes. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> It's we the the like you say the momentum of a right the press decides that you know a certain narrative and they all kind of latch onto that. Get but the also like reviewers they're under pressure to not review everything really well. So it's, it's a with it's like oh you know you've got this many four star shows we need some you know two mm. stars. And three okay, stars so too. otherwise the four stars don't yeah. look worth anything. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's. It's a weird business, a really weird mm. business. And I think particularly for, yeah, yeah, theatre. I'd been several times before with theatre companies. Mm. Um, I, I worked with, uh, it always sounds weird when I say it, Theatre Sans Frontières, yeah. <laughs> who are based in Hexham. Uh, so, and we went and did shows at Edinburgh, and that was always great. And, but you were part of a team of five or six. Yeah, yeah. And I, worked, I did a whole season with Trestle there. Yeah. You know, we were being paid. Yeah as well, so it was a whole different. When you're on your own and you're having to mm, get an audience. Mm, mm, mm. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely a slog. Mm. And, yeah, yeah. Anyway, questions, please. You referenced the cranky several times. I'm sorry, that I don't want another show, but I'll just know there was a double. So oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> not that, I just wondered if you could explain what that was. You're right, it's not anything to do with the crankies. As somebody at lunchtime <laughs> collared me uh, and said, yeah, what's your name? Anyway. So um, it's, it's something I picked up. I saw this shadow artist um, on YouTube, American, and, I, and she does beautiful cutouts and uses them for shadow puppetry. And I just, that's what <laughs> caught my imagination. But really, they weren't in, built for, not originally. Mm -hmm. So um, the phrase was coined by, I forget the name, but the, the guy that set up Bread and Puppet, which is a big community puppet theater in, in Vermont. So it's kind of East Coast folk tradition, but sort of inspired by those Victorian moving panoramas uh, that, you know, pre. And um, so they were painted. There, was, there are giant ones in museums that are painted, but people will either paint them or collage them, or sometimes they're patchworked and they're often, they're like an accompaniment, accompaniment to a folk song. So they've had all that. But when I saw that if you put a nice clear screen and then put silhouettes on it, that it could be this shadow thing, that's what inspired me. Mm. And it is a funny name. I call, I, in that post, I call it my rolling, scrolling, light up shadow machine because the crankies just. Yeah. It's a scroll. And you can, you can pop in tomorrow. We're in hall, hall one. Uh, hall one. Oh, you said we were going to move. Uh, okay. Oh, we've got all our stuff set out. <laughs> we might just want to stay yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the museum. But the distinctive thing, I think, yeah, like you're saying, because the, the classic cranky, right, is the moving scroll and it being static, but you, you've added this dimension to, yeah. So the there's moving happening. screens, there's moving yeah. puppets, mm. and then also what I love is that it's small enough for you to talk to the audience over it. Mm. So that, Over the top. Yeah, yeah, that you can still be there. as a You're still present as a performer. Uh -huh. Well, uh -huh. I am, maybe and not things everyone. come out front of the cranky as well. Well, we've had all discussions. People say, should I put the um, scenery on the front or the back? And it, yes. it's a choice. Yes. yes. There's so many ways to explore it, which we've, I've been realizing today. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ways in. All the possibilities. Yes. Yeah. I have a question. I have two questions. One's going to be about your shoes and what they were like. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is, when you were talking about how you all got started, and you said, I've never been so bold, but then you went on to name like several other times, you were very, very bold. All right. <laughs> and I just wanted to ask whether overall you think that being bold has paid off. Um, I, yeah, well, I think you have to. You have to be a bit tough and you have to, um, yeah, you have to be a bit, have a bit of a terrier in you because, you know, you're sort of, especially if you're just on your own, uh, you haven't even got a company around you, you know, you're sort of getting known and, and, and emailing. And, and, you know, you, even you can, you can get... In the days when you used to phone up theatres, it was the most... Those were the most soul-destroying days. Sorry, let me try emailing. Oh, she's at a meeting, you know, and it was just like, oh, I don't do that anymore. And just you just kind of like, well, if you get a response, you get a response. And it's just mm. about keeping pushing and not and getting so downhearted when you get kickbacks because one um 
I mean, there was more work, there's less work, and someone, there's always choices that people have to make. Um, when I first started out, I was like, I was talking to a friend's dad, and I, I was in France, and I just finished, and I was like, he said, what are you going to do? And I was like, mm, I think I might do this. And he just, it's really wonderfully <laughs> expansive, and he said, there's a, there's a, the theatre is a wide world, there's a sort of space for you. Oh. And I think, it's finding your corner. I, I remember turning up at um, uh, a venue near, in, in Norfolk, Saturday morning, and there was a workshop going on, and I had my show, and I was setting up, and I was all buzzing. And the <laughs> woman who'd booked me said, when you started out, did you imagine you would end up doing shows on a Saturday morning? <laughs> and um, I kind of went, yeah, yeah, this is the dream. She yeah. thought I'd sort of come down to just doing puppet shows for kids. It was really in telling, actually, but um, it's finding... I've not answered your question at all, but it's no, finding your niche <laughs> and, um, yeah. And also, let's not forget, so what was so confusing about these shoes? Do you remember? I had this idea of this little old lady who was, who hated, there's this wonderful story, she hated, this, who hated the dark. And she is a beautiful story, and she was, and she chased it away, she swept it out, she fed it to her dog, and it was just, you know, but of course, um, she hated the, uh, the dark or the, the dark, the light. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which way it goes now. So she hated the shadows and she was always like, yeah, sweeping. It's just, it's just a funny little book I'd found. It's a black and white book I found in a charity shop. And, and of course she gets exhausted at the end. She falls asleep, wakes up, the sun rises and she was like, I've done it. Brilliant. You know, it's just a sweet story. So I had this kind of, I made a kind of pinny. I tied my hair in a cloth. And I had these crappy old green flash shoes, you know, old ladies wear any old thing on their feet. And, and just so that, so that I was sort of not old, decrepit, but old. It, it, I understood why I was wearing green, uh -huh. uh, terrible old tacky green flash trainers, but it, it was a problem for her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Question, Alison at the back. Just wondering, how, are you working on anything coming up? What, what's, what's next for you? Yeah, I decided, um, I was very lucky to get funding uh, to make this show, The Witch and the Egg, last year, which uh -huh. is just, I didn't ever think I'd ever get funding again, but, um, so that was been brilliant, and so that's sort of what I'm touring at the moment, and um, it is all very flat, and, uh, you know, occasionally the egg wobbles over, and, you know, the, design, the, the puppet maker I work with, she said, you're all making a rod for your back, <laughs> 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 everything's flat. Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, I'm also thinking I might step out of the shadows because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so libraries go, sorry, we can't book you. Just having a bit of flexibility mm. so that I like the idea of being able to pop up in a, in a corner of a library or in a, in a uh, mm. school. So I'm, I'm going to make a giant pop-up book and um, a, a story about, that. there's a lovely German folktale called Frau Holler, I don't know how you pronounce it, but and and to do with she helps out some girl, but she shakes out her quilts, and all the feathers fly out, and it snows on her. So she's a kind of a. So I thought, well, that's good. That's me above the world, and then the world is the pop-up book. Mm. So that was the idea, and heeding um, Karen's, <laughs> where are the puppets? I thought, I'm going to put a puppet in it. So I've made <laughs> I've made a goose, but I, the goose is just a beak. And I imagine, I haven't quite worked this out, although I've sent the publicity out, but um, that she just comes on with a coat, you know, pop the hand um, in the pocket, kind of whip the coat off. Goose. Mm. Coat. Goose. I like, I think yeah, I, maybe nice. I, it sounds like I'm a bit lazy. I don't spend ages making a fully formed, <laughs> but I just love the things appearing yeah. as if from nowhere. Yeah. Um, so she's a goose, which she's got the down feathers from and um and the pop-up book lots of torn paper something i wanted to make a sort of snowy wintry um you know christmasy maybe show winter so lots of paper and layers and the little girl going to look for straw she's sent out to look for strawberries yeah. by her wicked mother stepmother or whatever and that's the other folk tale so i'm mashing together two folk tales uh, <laughs> sounds really exciting <laughs> so we, yeah i i, I Stupidly, and that maybe that's the boldness. I thought, right, I spent a couple of weeks, <laughs> said, pinged it off, and I've got some bookings in January, so I have to do it now. That's the way I <laughs> forced myself to. Uh, so 
So watch this space. Sunny, <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, uh, we're out of time. Uh, please join me in thanking you.